city of Rochester. This ground was originally part of the castle moat. Charles Dickens wished to be buried here. So this should be a quite a relatively easy shot. I'm going to take a shot of the battlements and hopefully try and get the keep in. Rochester Castle, part of the Norman Conquest um, decisive structures that were built by William the Conqueror, which were of course Dover Castle, which I've mentioned, the Tower of London, which I won't be visiting, and Rochester Castle quite foreboding but it was it had the same sort of st stone structures that um, uh, the s same stone the Norman stone it's only this one is not as preserved we take a look up at the keep it's actually quite in ruins but I do know that in terms of I don't know it's obviously medieval England right but and that was a dark age, the dark ages. When I think of castles, you think of, um, you know, scenic scenes and beauty, princesses, kings, knights in shining armor, that kind of thing. But all I can think of with this is murder, war, anger. Ugh, it just gives me that sense of, not that it's depressive, but there is one movie that I know of that Kind of it's about um, Rochester Castle, it's called Ironclad. I've watched it once, and once was enough. <laughs> I'm not suggesting that I don't like gore and all of that kind of thing. I, I don't mind an action movie, who doesn't? But this one has got some graphic scenes in it. I'm not even going to mention it, but you know, it might not be your thing. But it's about medieval England, it's about the siege of Rochester Castle. Um, during the time of King John, 12.15. Anyway, let's set up for a shot and see what I can get from it. Did you see the sign? This ground was originally part of the castle moat, so I'm stood in the castle moat. So rather an easy shot, this one, F8. No, let's go for, let's go for F11. The sun is quite bright. Drops the speed down to 180th. Simple as. Ooh, it looks lovely with that blue sky. I wonder if I could just tweak that blue sky with the polarizer. Really enhance the darkness and the clouds. Yeah, we'll go for that shot. Very fortunate with the sun as well today. Yeah, that's lovely. Right, I'm just going to stand on the other side, just by the, by the cathedral there. And why is there a cathedral in Rochester, I hear you say? Did you know that each county in England only has one city, apart from London, which seems to have lots of cathedrals, but it only has one city, and you will get a cathedral in that city. So Canterbury is Kent's cathedral. Um, Lincoln has Lincoln Cathedral, York has York Cathedral. Kent has Rochester Cathedral and Canterbury Cathedral. But there was a time when Rochester was the city of the county. I'm not even going to go into the rules of why, but eventually the city lost its city status because it's still got the cathedral. <laughs> anyway, let's have a look at this shot. Not as pleasing an aspect, actually, because I've got the main road. So I thought it would work, and I got people walking. So I'm going to take one shot anyway, just so that you you can see what I've got. What I've got to work with under these conditions. <laughs> um, same settings. Uh, you know what? I'm going to go for F13. I've got Chappie with his phone. Busy doing his bits and bobs. Oh, that hurt my ears. Is that what you call compensating for something? Open bore exhaust. 
kind of looks okay. This leaf in the way is, is, is doesn't work for me. Right, I'm going to walk around the actual battlement and then up into the castle area to see if there's a composition to be had. So where's the best aspect? I think from down here. It's got to be down here. The keep, the wall, and maybe a touch of the cathedral. Although that's not so important. Right, let me set up and see what I can find. When would I capture this? Would I capture it in the morning? Now where are we looking north? I'm getting my bearings here. So the Medway's coming down. There's the bridge going across. So north is behind me, south is that way. So the sun would set in the west. I could bathe it, but certainly a sunrise. I could catch it with the sun's rays and maybe even just take a, a single shot of the keep and not the surrounding area. But if I just pan around here, you'll see I can incorporate the cathedral and part of the gatehouse round to the keep and then bring it round to the edge of the buttress and the, the, the fortress wall. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a pano there that shot and then bring it round to the edge of the wall there so I'll get a nice kind of pano for it that'll be nice do, do, do. I'm actually going to do this in four pictures one two three four and the reason is I'm getting the wrong perspective so it'll be easier to merge them together so shot one noticed my camera's a little unstable on its tripod shot two and different light now shot three oh, I'd love to do this <laughs> ignore that one I want to do it without hands free you know with hands free and shot four right to the edge, got the tree, got the keep, got the battlements and I did it again. I'd rather do self-timer. Fabulous, four shots right along here somewhere. is Rochester Castle. We're chalking them off, aren't we? What have I got left? I'm not even going to say, just in case I've filmed it all out of sequence. Actually, I'm going to carry that back to the car. So, um, on to the next one. I knew it was too good to last. The rain finally came. So, um, we're actually at Hever Castle, home of Anne Boleyn. Now, Haver Castle was built in 1270 by William de Haver. So I guess, um, or William de Haver. This must, he must have been, he was um, a sheriff of Edward I. That's what I know about William de Haver. Passed through multiple generations and finally came into the hands of Geoffrey Bullen in, I think, 1460, something around that. Now, Bullen changed their name to Boleyn. He was the great-grandfather of Anne. Now, what do we know about Henry VIII? He liked his women to be sporty, athletic, you know, it was um, sort of energetic women. And that was his second wife's downfall because every time she would come in a room, all she would do was, was Anne Boleyn. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna set up for two shots of this castle. I wonder if I can get any, oh, this flat grey sky, look at that sky. Will I get any dynamics? I probably doubt it. But I will get a couple of shots for, of the castle anyway, so let's see how we get on. I'm at the widest I can go here. There's very limited, um, <laughs> trip over my gear. There's very limited locations. I've found that the place is really closed off. 
So I'm going to take just a shot here across the moat and it's just finding the right moment just when there are no public in the shot. There's a couple of people sat, stood here, chatting like they're in a supermarket. So that's the shot. And then I'll do another shot just across the way, looking straight at the camera. Okay, so setting wise, um, ISO is 100, it always has been. Keeping it at F8, it's not a landscape, but it will give me the most focus. And it's suggesting a speed of 1 40th of a second. Go for the shot. Okay, that's the shot. I'll show it to you now as I walk over to another, the other location. There is a honeypot location for this and it's standing down on the footpath looking right across the bridge. But I've decided to come up this little hill just to get myself a different perspective and hopefully not have the castle in that kind of perspective because I'm high up, it gives me a nice range. So what you're seeing there is 18 mil. So it's a question of whether I zoom in a tad, put the castle up on the top left third as such. Lots and lots of people, I'm not even going to clone them out, what you see is what you get here. You know, I'll have to come here of an evening with the sun setting and washing over the front of the castle and the, the, the gates are closing at six o'clock so I'm standing here at ten to six trying to get the shot because there'll be no one around then. Really quite simple, I'm at, where am I, 24 mil here? A little bit of the bridge on the bottom right, the castle, let's get into focus, that's good. Do I size up the people? I'm not going to be able to get this shot without anybody in it. But if I can get the least amount of people as possible, it might be acceptable. Or I just don't bother. Hey, it's, it's COVID friendly, isn't it? Let's do it. F8, 1 30th of a second, ISO 100. Rather pleasant. And that, my friends, is Hever Castle, home of Anne Boleyn. Right, on to the next one. Some bonus footage. <laughs> Depending on where you stand, you get a really nice aspect. And this is what I'm seeing. So I've come across the green and I think, oh, you know what, that's the shot you were after all day long. And I've got the, a bit of moat, a bit of castle. So, completely handheld. Where are you? Here, that side. Completely handheld. I'm going to zoom in around 35 mil. Right, because I'm going handheld, I can't actually zoom in. But that's nice. That's 35 mil. I'm going to show you what I've got. I'm seeing that scene there. It's rather nice, we've got this moat thing coming along al along the edge. If I turn here, you've got the bridge. Yeah, because it's like double moated. There's a moat going around the edge of the castle and then there's this little moat. So that's quite a nice one. Isn't it funny how the composition changes the moment you just turn ever so slightly? So you get more of the facade of the front of the castle and yeah, that's the one. I'm going to go for a shot. So what am I doing here? I am in, let's go into aperture mode. F8, that's giving me 1 40th of a second. I'm going to have to make sure I'm not juddering, but I have vibration reduction. Rather nice. Let's increase the f-stop to f11. No, I don't like that. Let's go down to f6.3 yes that's the one <laughs> after all of that i just needed one shot and it was that one there so cool now i'm finished at heaver castle <laughs> on to the next one
Chiddingstone Castle is actually a private venue, weddings, that kind of thing. And today, today, tonight, it's four o'clock, it's gone four o'clock, there's a literary festival going on. <laughs> oh, sounds a bit posh. If that's your boat, then go and float it. <laughs> sounds a little bit pretentious to me. And because we're in the heart of what I like to think of as stockbroker belt, so in days of yore you would have um, the, the very rich in London moving out to Surbiton and Cobham and then into Guildford and Woking and then coming over into Kent to Tunbridge Wells, Tunbridge, Stockbroker Belt land. So uh, they're all talking a little bit like this, you know, oh, we're here for the, for the literary festival. I don't fit in that category, I'm afraid. It's just a bit too pretentious. Anyway, I'm going to take a shot of this aspect and then I'm going to walk around to the other side and get a shot of the front facade. Straighten up a little bit. Got a few people walking by. But that's, I guess, if the front, this is the side facade, I'm now in the realms of do it until you're told not to do it because if it's a private venue and they use it for weddings, chances are I shouldn't really be taking photographs of it, but it was on my list of castles, so I just assume it'd be all right, you know? So this shot first, it's getting a little dark, so let's have a look, aperture priority, F14, let's drop that down to F8, 125th of a second, probably because of the darkness. Oh yeah, that brings out all the greens and everything. I'm going to take a couple. I'm going to do three, so I'll get a bit of bracketing going on. And bring out the darkness. We've suddenly got a cloud cover coming in, as well as a jogger. So I push three shots, one at F8, one at F10. I'm going to do an F16 so that I can get the darkness of the clouds. Yeah, that didn't do it, so let's push it right down. F25, it's a third of a second, but that's fine, I can work with that. Yes, that's brought out the cloud. Right, other side of the castle now. It's a rather lovely looking house. And you know what it reminds me of when I was growing up? There was a po program with, was it Colin, Colin Forth? Is he one of the, look at that, isn't that wonderful? Anyway, the program was called the Flaxton Boys and I was li living in Norway when that was coming out. Oh, I like that, that's a nice aspect. With those moody clouds, I should be able to get something really dynamic there. So here's the, different aspect. I, I, I won't, I'm not even going to say which is north facing, south facing. It just looks wonderful. I think what I will have to do is a bit more bracketing, but that's fine. You know, I'm learning how to do bracketing and that's great. Chiddingston Castle. That's what I have to contend with. Comings and goings. But that is the iPhone video shot, which the iPhone does all its perfect exposure, gives me the dark moody clouds and brings out the lightness of the stonework. So as a guide, that's what I'm trying to get. So we'll go for one shot at F25. That gives me nice dark because I'm doing three brackets. F10, 1 80th of a second. Yeah, and F7.5, 160th of a second. Mm, there's my series going across there. One way or the other. I will splice them together. And that will be Chiddingstone Castle. I have to say, I'm a bit tired. I've done four castles today. I'm not going to tell you what ones and in what sequence. But the logic is, if I can get out and do as many as I can, then I've covered a lot of ground, and I have today. I can't imagine the miles I've done to get these um, shots done. But it's all good. It's all part of the adventure, isn't it?
So with that, Chiddingstone Castle completed, on to the next one. Oh, Tunbridge, Tunbridge, Tunbridge. I'm back with you, back to see your old castle. And why, you may think, am I saying that? Well, I cut my teeth as a software developer with a small software house here in Tunbridge back in 1998. And visiting the castle, I would find a little bit of solitude to have my lunch contemplating things such as if then no what is it for next and do while loops <laughs> all that kind of stuff oh. so I can go up there I can go down there because this is all that's left of the castle Take a wee walk up here where the original Mott and Bailey was. Now there's been a castle here on these grounds since the Norman Conquest. And in 1080s they built a wooden Mott and Bailey, probably up here on this mound, which was built out of wood and probably only lasted about 20 years. Now, despite the fact that the, the Normans conquered Britain in 1066 it wasn't so much that the locals basically bowed down to their new overlords and everything was hunky-dory in fact the Normans met with great resistance throughout the country from all the current Saxons um, nearly at the top probably out of breath so they needed they needed a defence, so they built the wooden castle here at Tunbridge to protect the Norman lords from the Saxon hordes. Here we go, I'm up here now. Can I see a view of the castle? Where will I get a good shot of it? Is that a good shot? I think it's one of three going to be that one and from down somewhere on the green looking straight at it right let's set up so in terms of a live view if I pull it any further back I get the do I yeah I've got a little bit of the fence I don't really want that in the shot but I've got the flag so I need the flag to give it authenticity That'll do, won't it? That's a good little shot. Right, let's take that shot and then we'll go down and take a shot, at, you know, straight on at the camera, which is a honey pot shot. A good shot. I'm in manual priority just so that I could see what the camera was going to give me at ISO 100. And it's saying, suggesting F14 at 1 60th of a second. So I've got the left hand wall as a leading line. That's better. Leading line coming down the wall into the, into the gatehouse. I'm actually going to display for you. Well, these pictures will come at the end, but here's um, an old map from the English Heritage site, which depicts the castle in its former glory. So the picture, the first picture, the map and then I'll be down there when it's finished. This is what I'm seeing. This is the honey pot shot. You always have a honey pot shot, don't you? And what I'm going to do is just take one shot. It is what it is. Straighten it up, etc. So we've got F10, we've got 1 250th of a second. People are going to be cloned out. Doesn't look too bad, to be quite honest. Don't know if it's a candidate for a calendar. But it's a castle, and it was on my list, so there we go. 
Right, what's next? Welcome to Scotney Castle. Doesn't look much like a castle, does it? And that's because this is the stately home. So the original castle, which we'll visit in a second and I'll take some shots of, was built, I think in the 13, 1500s, something like that. I'll put it on the, on the screen. Um, I've not actually done any research on this one, although I've visited on numerous occasions. The, um, the house was then built in the 1800s and then donated to the National Trust in the 1930s, I believe. You can see it behind me, the manor house is lovely. And if you can get on the field at the far side, you can get a lovely aspect with the old castle and the new manor house in the background. But I'm not here to photograph that. I'm here to photograph this. So there's the lake in the distance. And you can just see the old turret of the castle. It just looks a bit splendid in that countryside. So I'm quite fortunate that the weather's really been patchy, I have to say, considering it's now July. We, one minute is sunny, next minute is cloudy and rain. I might have thought, at least by July, you know, all the blossom of spring is gone. Flowers are not coming out yet, which will be August. I was expecting some really balmy weather. The old castle, though, because of the light and the blue sky and the clouds, should be perfect. It's the perfect situation to try and capture the reflection of the old castle on the on the lake that it's sitting on. So let's get down here, let's set up, and let's talk about composition. Honeypot location number one. The sun is shining on it. Have a look at this live view. See what I've got going on. Got the old turret and it just looks all splendid. Just think for a moment, there's a touch of blue in the sky. And there's a couple of people around. I'll wait till they've disappeared as well. So, wipe you off. I'll do this one at F8. 180th of a second. Mm -mm -mm. Excellent. Have a look at this one while I go around to the other honeypot location. So actually this is not a honeypot lo shot location. We've got the back side of the castle. What, I, what I've got here, I'm widest I can go, 18 millimetre, and I've, I've got the, the, is it a turret? Is that what you call those edges of a castle? A tower with its um, lovely architecture on the top. I can see some blue coming. Uh, but you've got the ruins of the old manor house just on the right there. If I swivel round, you can see, zoom in, but there's a lot of old ruin and then they've got a garden with some people. Destroyed my shot there now. So I can't, I don't want to take the tree in because I don't have a wide enough angle, but if I get the ruins, this I don't think would be a calendar shot, but I just wanted to include it anyway because it's rather lovely. So F5.6 I'm going for. I focused in on the castle and one hundredth of a second. So I'll just wait for the sunshine, then I'll take the shot and show it to you here. And then I'll work around to the other side of the castle and just take one more shot from that new aspect that I saw earlier. So we got the aspect of the old house with its tower and there's a little gate portal here and then the old entrance, a slight reflection. So let's set up live view for you so that you can see what I'm seeing through the camera lens. I like that. So I've actually got the entrance on the left, the house, the, the sort of kind of drawbridge and the lake. If I drop it any further, I start getting the reeds 
and the ferns. But that'll work, that's a nice composition. So again, am I gonna get the sunshine? I don't know if I'll get the sunshine, but I'll take the shot anyway. I was just chatting with a fellow photographer. She's gonna look me up on YouTube. But she said, try coming down on a different perspective. So I'm gonna try that. Just the one shot. what we get for. Oh. That there is Scotney Castle. And that is this video shoot complete. It's funny that you meet people. I was just chatting with a, a lady called Jan, giving me some tips on photography. She's been doing it four years. I'm loving the fact that there's a community, you know, and people are like-minded. Well, you know, it's the same in any walk of life, isn't it? People will have the same interests. Um, so yeah, that's it. That's Scotney Castle. What's next? Hmm. Bodium Castle, the only castle that I'm covering that's not in Kent. So we're in East Sussex, just outside Roberts Bridge. And this is Bodium Castle. Now, it's kind of the quintessentially English castle design that you would expect if you said to a child, draw me a castle. Because it just looks like a fairy tale castle. It's, it's what you'd expect a princess or a king of the land to live in. And you've got a moat and turrets and you've got um, a portcullis entrance and you've got this long walkway although to be quite honest the original walkway is where I was standing here and it would have spanned across across the lake there and joined there and then goes in. It was built in um, 1385 by a Sir Ed Edward Dallingrig <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm saying that right Dallingrig and he was a former knight of Edward III but he had to get permission from Richard II. But he built the castle primarily as a defense against any French invasion during the Hundred Years' War. I don't think it was ever used in anger. So in terms of honeypot locations, this is obviously one of them. You've got the, the walkway leading into the castle, you've got your two turrets, you've got the portcullis keep in the middle, and it's, it's just so picturesque. It's, it's the um, epitome of what you would expect of a, a, a castle in, in England. So there are several compositions that I can do. There is this one, obviously. The, the hillside up the top is not particularly high, but I'll walk up there and take a handheld shot of that. And then as you go around the other side of the castle, you can get a shot across the moat, which I will also do. So just three shots for this one. I don't need to do a panorama because it fits right in. So that's cool. Let's do a shot. I'm gonna go with F11 and ISO 100, and it's giving me one 25th of a second, probably because it's, it's clouding over. So that's rather nice. I'll walk around to the other side. Will I go in? I might go in. Yes. Well, you won't find me sitting down on the job, but you might find me kneeling down. And the reason is, I'll give you the live view, if you see this shot, I'm right at the apex of the castle. The sun's trying to come through, so I might get a nice shot or two. Um, so yeah, just as a, another honeypot composition, if I capture the frame, the castle with the tree and the bushes and whatnot, I should just make for a nice shot, even if I only get two or three. We go into aperture priority, F11, 
Okay, so 100 and it's 1 50th of a second. And there's three, some blue sky coming out there. That's rather nice. I think I might just put the ND filter on and give it a shot. It might work, it might not, because there's no light and it's all gray. kind of almost want to stay a bit longer, but, you know, make hay while the sun... Oh, it's not shining, is it? <laughs> okay, that, that really was Bodium Castle, and it's rather splendorous. And so that's it, I've completed it. I hope you've enjoyed watching that as much as I have making it. It was a, a lot of fun. In terms of a challenge, I'm not sure I would choose some of those castles for a calendar. <laughs> But actually having, having the calendar, having the experience has been really good. Um, so feel free, give the camera, give the camera, give the video a like and subscribe. And the funny thing with the likes is, and I've noticed this with one or two of my videos, the more the likes I get, the more it attracts more viewers. It's really quite bizarre. So the trick is like the video, subscribe. And if you like the video and subscribe, then click the bell notification because that will let you know when I upload another video to my content. So with that, thanks for watching and bearing with. I'll see you in another video. Bye for now.